Well, good morning. It's a wet, rainy day here today. We're going to try to work on the Crown Vic, or the Grand Marquis Swap, Crown Vic, either one. We're working on the rear end to go under the car. There's the donor car, it's taking all the parts off of We got the rear end out, and we're fixing to uh, start cleaning it up. Got it out to... Uh, Friday, I think it was, but uh, it set in the rain and got cold. We ain't done a whole lot, so we got the rear end sitting here in front of the shop. And we'll go with it. It's 8.8. .8. It's uh, 373 gears. It's going to match up with the motor and transmission we're going to use, 4.6. A lot of people says, well, why would you take a perfectly good 9-inch Ford rear end out and put an 8.8 .8 on it? Well, you can't use that 300 gear ratio up in under this one because you wouldn't have any power starting off. It'd be geared too high. So you got to have this low-speed rear end. To get you started good, and then once you get into overdrive, you know, you're out on the road, you're good to go. But yeah, I like the 9-inch nine, nine Ford rear end better. But I'm having to keep everything uh, the right gear ratio for the transmission and all the drivetrain set up the same. So, But we're fixing to go to cleaning off these brackets. Cause we going we got a new set of spring perches to put on it. So this in here had coils, so we're gonna clean uh we're gonna clean all the uh all the brackets where the coil set and where the your control arms on the rear set and your shock brackets. We're gonna take all this stuff and clean it all up and take it off and uh, get it good and clean. Sort of get ready to mount it between these little showers we're having, so hopefully we can get this cleaned up, unless it sets into raining on us. But anyway, stay with us. We'll fill you in a little bit more as we get started here.
do walks down front of me. I don't even use a ratchet no more much. Purchase is going to go about about right under here, somewhere to the right of this bracket. We're going to have to relocate this bracket. I'm trying to figure out what's going to be the best way to do that. Uh, we'll figure it out here, though, where we're going to put it, and then we'll let you know where we're going to reinstall it. Probably have to be on the rear end somewhere to get these mercy brakes to work right on this. Because I don't think we can use the F100 cables unless we can hook them up in here. And if we can hook them up in there, we're still going to have to have a bracket for them to go through to change the angle where they'll work. But we're still going to have to move this. So I think we're going to have to take this a loose here. Take it out of the way for right now till we get it all cleaned up. But anyway. But yeah, appreciate you staying with us and watching us. And uh, hopefully we'll get this thing cleaned up. Y'all stay with us. We'll get right back to you. Alright. I'll show you a little trick to how to get this spring loaded piece out of here. It's locked in. It's got a. It's got about three or four little prongs on it so I found out you can take a small uh, I guess it'd be a three-eighths or half inch water clamp or hose clamp and you can uh, put it up about an eighth of an inch from it and tighten it up and then push it push it forward Push it forward like that right there, and then loosen your clamp, and it comes out. Same way as on your F100s underneath it. You can actually release these. Then on the uh, your connector that you have right here, you got a little tab on the back side right here. If you can see that little tab, you just pry this little tab up, and this thing, it just slides out of that. Got a little slide it sets down in. It goes in there. Once you get that tab up, you just push out on it. And that releases it. And it just lets it pop out. And then that way you can take these uh these off until you get cleaned up. And then because definitely if you're planning on using a the same rear end underneath it, your F100, to uh, get your gear ratio right if you're using a 4.6 with an overdrive transmission. You're definitely going to have to use this rear end to keep you, you know, keep your vehicle and everything, the gears right on it. So, but it's best to go ahead and take this out. I should have done released all of this before I started this video. But, uh, but anyway, that's a little helpful hint to help you out with a little clamp. Keep them struggling with it, trying to press it down with a uh, needle nose or screwdriver. But anyway, 
Yo, we working, we getting on along with the uh, cleanup on it. It's gonna take a little bit, but uh, we got a lot of grinding to do, and uh, we got uh, a little bit uh, more brackets to move and uh, take off and relocate. But uh, but anyway, stick with us, and uh, we'll give you a little bit more on it just as soon as we uh, get started. We got that one side cleaned up on the passenger side, so we're going to take a little break. We'll get back to you here just in a short. Well, well, looky here. Looks like the old Minute Man has some visitors, and as you can see in this video, Christmas was still kind of going on, and uh, some of his fans here bring them some uh, Christmas gifts. Let's watch him open a few of them, and then we'll get back to work. I have to show my picture here. It's already Christmas time. I got some friends of mine that's brought me a Christmas present. Thought I'd throw it out there to all the YouTubers. Let y'all see it. Yeah, it works on the whole. Yep. That's a nice one. Him. So what you done, you let you let me look at the motorcycles first and then you left the good for the last, right? <laughs> Man. Alright, YouTubers. Yeah. That's the worst. Look at here. Hey they they know we're forward people. <laughs> Man. That looks good. I appreciate that. Woodwork? Okay. F100. Man. He drew that freehand. Jay, look at that now. Ain't that nice? Man. Yeah, you done an excellent job on that. I appreciate that. It's good. It's like... Mm -hmm. Ford, the best pickup line. Man. Ow. Check that out, Jay. I really appreciate it, man. All right, we back at it. <clears throat> got the frame turned around. Got it up here. And uh, we're fixing to drop this 9-inch rear end out taking the uh u-bolts loose and 
we got the 8.8 .8 ready to go under it. So uh, we're going to be working on that. Stay with us. Alright, we're going to set this up there and line it up. Once we get it all in place, lined up, and uh, bolt it in, we're going to take it all back out once we uh, get it in place and tack it. We'll weld it, and then uh, we'll put it back in after we got the frame cleaned up and painted. Stay with us. As you can see, we got the 8.8 .8 slid up under it. Anyway, I was going to show you my purchase that, uh, that we ordered off of Amazon. They, uh, more or so, purchased a uh, three inch, like for a three inch tube. Uh, here's what they look like. A good heavy purchase. I didn't want to cut them off the nine inch. I wanted to keep it original in case somebody needed it. So, but the only problem you're going to have installing them you're gonna to have to drill out this perch hole to about a nine sixteenths because i think it's a half inch now you got to drill it out where the dowel it will go up on this dowel here so but anyway that is the only uh only thing you got to do so uh but we purchased them from amazon and the part number on them is uh is 85090 you get your power of them if you're changing putting the uh, the 8.8 .8 in uh, out of the Mercury Grand Marquis or the Crown Vic uh, or Lincoln either one Lincoln uh, 2003 to 11 I think it is a Lincoln and then there's uh, one more Mercury that has this same front end and all in the rear end the same but anyway we're we're tempting to uh, get this thing raised up with a jack, and uh, we're just gonna set it in and square it up. We're not gonna do no welding today. We're gonna wait till probably tomorrow if the weather permits. What we're gonna do on these uh, these rear spring hangers here on the back side. Let me get my camera adjusted. I'll show them to you. Alright, these, these right here, we're going to order a set of the dropped. It's going to be uh, for a 4 inch drop. We're going to order a set of these and put on it because of the leveling. We're not level. Uh, I don't want my back end setting up in the air real high. You can also order this, uh, this one here for a... Uh, for the same four inch drop on it in order the whole kit but what we're going to do is we're going to take these off and we're going to turn them up we're going to take this one and turn it upside down and uh reboot the thing back in and drill some holes and uh we're going to get our four inch drop 
and uh, instead of having to uh, purchase uh, purchase these. So, but anyway, as uh, soon as we get them in, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna be doing some uh, once we get it lined up in place, and we got us a uh, angle finder to get our angle back on the rear end. We're gonna be setting our motor in and uh, getting our cross member set like it's supposed to be and redone and so once we do put the motor back in but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh take the front end now we got it all completed uh we're gonna take it all back out and uh we ain't gonna have nothing but a frame we're gonna go ahead and start sandblasting getting ready to paint it once we get the cross member and everything lined up but anyway that's where we at right now. I appreciate y'all uh, watching, and uh, hopefully, with the mistakes I make, I can help y'all keep y'all from making them. But uh, but I got the rear end, got it cleaned up pretty good, and uh, but anyway, we're gonna try to get these uh, get it set up in under here. But uh, Anyway, we'll, uh, I don't know, it's getting late, so we may, we may quit here in a little bit and, uh, start back again tomorrow. So, appreciate y'all, uh, sticking with us here and watching along. I know we got a long way to go, and, uh, the thing about it is, we just, uh, we ain't in no hurry. We're just taking our time. So, but, anyway, check back in with us. We'll have something here later on. Appreciate y'all watching. All right, we got the 8.8. Uh, .8. We got it uh, boated up in there. We ain't got nothing tacked. We got it centered up on eight and three eighths on each side from these spring hangers. Got our new purchase set up there, but we're gonna have to uh, we're going to lower these springs. So probably what we'll do is uh we won't weld this thing probably what we'll do just tack the purchase because we may have to grind them back loose once we lower once we get this thing lowered probably we're gonna have to cut them back loose again because our angle our angle here on our for our drive shaft boat set on our yoker, it may be off once we lower it. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the motor once we set it in there and line our cross member up on the back on the transmission. And then once we get it lined up, then we're gonna line up this rear end. We're gonna line the angle up right on the transmission before we really nail this thing good on these purchase. So, anyway. We want to try to get these, uh, get all these hangers in here turned around and order these, order these shackles, the long, longer shackles to drop it three to four inches. So that's where we're at right now. So it's been a long day. We work, worked at it, but we didn't get a whole lot done, but uh, but maybe tomorrow, Lord's will, we'll get a little more done. Appreciate y'all uh, staying with us here, and uh, we'll pick it back up in the morning. Y'all have a good night. We're going to try to pull this 9-inch forger in up and under the frame. Get it all out and get it let down. Got the wheels and tires back on the back. Check our leveling here.
got the 9-inch forward rear end moved up and onto the frame. And we're going to get ready to let her down. Check the height on it. Of course, you know we're on a hillside. It's hard really to get it exact. We're going to have to put it in the lower shop and uh, get a measurement on it. See where we at. All right, we're going to try to cut this this spring mount loose on the front side and do a reverse on it. So we got everything braced up to where it'll stay put in place. So we're going to check it out and see what we can do here. Got them ground down pretty good. We can see them. See the imprint where there's that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a drill, a small bit, and we're gonna drill in the center and relieve the pressure on them because factory put in them things uh, was riveted in and they swelled and they're tight and it's gonna be hard to knock them out. So once we drill through them and relieve the pressure, I think we can take a punch and we can get them out. We're gonna give it a shot there. Drill to China. All right. We're going to see if that one right there will, will come out. If not, we may have to step it up a little bit on size. Drill a little bit bigger hole. But if it'll come out on that, that's about a 3 sixteenths. Might be a quarter inch drill bit. These are about half inch rivets. We're going to give it a shot right there. We don't. See if it'll come out. It don't look like it's moving. Now let's step it up a little bit to a bigger size, I guess. Try something here. Knock our hanger off. Grind them on down a little bit further. Got about an eighth of an inch still sticking in here. Go ahead and take that loose and go ahead and do that while we're take the spring loose. We sprayed these things a couple of times with some PB blaster. I don't know if it'll work or not, but we're gonna we're gonna look at it and see. If it don't, we're gonna go with the lowering go lowering kit, because we gotta lower it, we gotta get it down. It's too high. It ain't gonna look right, so.
I seen one YouTuber do this. Maybe more, but I don't know. You got this bottom part where you spring swivels here. And once you turn it over, you don't have a whole lot of yield here because of this. So we're going to have to look at that and see. That may, that may hurt us, so we'll have to find out. All right, we're back. These things are uh, a little aggravating getting off, but uh, you don't actually have to even drill the uh, pot rivets out. Right in here, I just use them as a, a guide for this, and I've raised this, uh, I raised this bracket, this spring bracket, turned it over and raised it up to two and a half inches. It's, uh, right in here, it's two and a half inches on both sides. I had to cut the other side loose to get it evenly. But anyway, I've got, uh, it's loaded, it's loaded a good four inches already without the, uh, rear shackles being put on, but, uh, once we get them on, it's going to lower it on down a little more, but, uh, and once we get our bed back on, the weight too. So we're just, we're trying to get close to uh, level all the way around. We're not going to get perfect, but we're going to get as close as we can. So what we've got here, we're going to uh, we're going to drill some half inch holes, and we're going to put half inch bolts in here in case we need to uh, take these off and go with the other ones if they don't work out. And what I've done, I. I shifted these to the back a little bit. I done about a, a half hole on the on this uh, rivet, and you can uh, shift it. I done uh, I braced it up to uh, the top of that one, and then over this here, I dropped it about half halfway down on the uh, hole, maybe a little more. But I got them both one uh, two and a half, and uh, so. It's, uh, it's loaded a good bit. So this, we got two and a half here. So once our bed goes back on, we're going we're gonna to have clearance for to clear the floor. So you don't want to get up too high and uh, go to hitting, uh, hitting the bed. So And two, with the way uh, shifting this to the back just a little bit is going to give you more clearance. Right up in our new springs here. It's gonna give you more clearance, but once you get the uh, longer, the shackles on the back, once you get them on, that's gonna give you a little bit more. It's gonna raise these up. But once weight goes down on it, it's gonna push up anyway, so you're gonna still have plenty of clearance, but we don't have anything welded still on the purchase on the rear end here on the axle. We're gonna leave them loose until we get the motor set in and then get our uh, angle finder and get it straight everything uh, with the rear end so it uh, right there where our yoke's at on the rear end and everything. We got it sitting right now at about 15 degrees but uh, we want to make sure that we ain't too high and uh, once we load the weight up on it it's going to push on down so we need to get it pretty doggone close because we don't want to have to go back and redo anything, cut anything loose. So, but anyway, that's where we at right now on this thing. We uh, we fixing to drill these holes and uh, try to uh, get some boats in here. All right, we got we got three holes drilled for a half inch grade five boat, and uh, we got we got three boats in it, and one of them right here you can't get in. We're going to have to take the boat back out and uh, shift the rear end back to get that third one. So we got the other side lined up. We're going to go ahead and drill them holes so we can move the rear end back till we can get that fourth hole. And uh, we're putting that uh, blue Loctite on, on the threads and uh, tightening them down about 300 foot pounds on that big bad boy earthquake uh, torque wrench right there. So uh, if they look good and they work good, we may come back after we 
We may come back and tack them things with a little well. But I don't, I think them boats hold just as good as them rivets will. But anyway, that's where we're at right now. We're going we're gonna, to uh, work on the other side there and drill them holes. And we'll show you once we get to this rear end pull back and uh, springs out of the saddles there. And we're going to drill that last fourth hole on both sides and put the boats in. And we're going to get it out here and see how level it is. I think we've dropped it a pretty good bit, but... Still need to drop it a little bit more by putting them shackles on the back. But uh, we're still like a long ways, but we're getting there. Appreciate y'all uh, sticking in there with us. All right, we'll get the spring mounts. We done got them reversed, and uh, we got the boats in them. We had to remove this boat here and raise the spring up to get this boat here. Couldn't, couldn't drill for it, so. But anyway, we got a uh, half inch grade five boats in it with lock washers with blue lock tied on. We got them tightened down and also our angle is gonna be just a little bit too much, but which we ain't welded nothing on the spring perch yet. So we fixing, we're gonna set it up once we set the motor in. We're gonna get all that squared up Maybe tomorrow, Lord's willing. We got, we got these, gonna put these on new. They're gonna be about four inches longer than these. So that's gonna help, uh, that's gonna help drop it a little bit more. We're coming on. We're keeping these bars on the front of it because we're gonna pull this front end back out from under it. You wanna try to, when you're putting this, Crown Vic or Mercury Grand Marquis front end on it. You need to, you need to take your. I took one piece of channel, three inch channel, and put across here where the bumpers. Cut it the exact same width as the inside of the frame. Bolted it in. And then I took this piece of heavy wall, one inch square tubing. I welded it where the frame wouldn't. It stay, you know, up and down. Uh, vertical like it should so but I know a lot of people get in trouble they cut them frames loose they uh they don't they don't put enough abrasion in them and they'll move on you and your core support and all that stuff ain't gonna boat back up if you let it move because once you set that front end up in there and boat it down that's where she's gonna stay you'll have to redo it if you don't or redrill your holes up on front you know, on these mounts but anyway, try to keep that in mind when you're changing these things. We don't like much before we start pulling all this stuff back out and getting ready to sandblast. But we're going to try to get everything squared away on this. Uh, I don't know about this uh, transmission cross member here where I'm going to use this or the Mercury Grand Marquis. I'm still undecided where to cut it down or either add a plate to this one and uh, make it work moving it back whatever I need to do but I've been seeing some of them taking the cross member from the Mercury Grand Marquis or Crown Vic and they've been a cutting them down and putting plates on the end and boating them on the inside of the frame and right here where your transmission mounts up I mean it's a good stout cross member there's no doubt about it uh, have to do a lot of cutting down. This thing's just boxed in. It's a two-piece job. I roll it over here where you can see it. It's a it's a boxed in deal and it's heavy duty. It'll make a good cross member. Of course it'll take a little while getting it there, but anyway. We'll see which way we want to go with that. Still gotta change our body mounts. But uh, we're going to take them out before we sandblast. But anyway, we'll put them back in before we put the cab back on. Get it all lined up. But anyway, we thank you for watching. Hope you like. If you do, hey, hit that subscribe button on the bottom there. We appreciate it. We'll catch you all tomorrow. Well, that does it for this fifth installment of Jay's Backwood Shop. 
We sure do hope y'all have enjoyed this episode. And as the Minute Man just said, if y'all like this content, please consider subscribing and pressing that like button. Until then, y'all have a blessed day.